Hello, I'm Glenda Bailey Mershon. Welcome to Women and Books. Today I want to talk to you about Molly Antopol's The Un-Americans, a book that Benjamin Percy in Esquire magazine refers to as post-911 literature. He entitles that essay about her book what it means to be American in eight short stories. I'm not so sure that The Un-Americans is so much about post-9-11 America as it is about the post-9-11 world. And certainly it's about unsettled times. Each and every story is about a character reacting to some conflict, some disturbance that is personal, but that is set in, in very rich social and political history. So, for example, we have a widely divergent set of views. Um, everything from a young girl who is living with her Jewish communist parents in uh, 1950s California, to uh, a second generation immigrant who makes a return trip to the old world, to a young Israeli who is trying to make her mark in international journalism. Now, Antipol was named by the National Book Foundation in 2013, one of their five under 35 authors to watch. And in this book, we get a really good view of exactly why that is. These are very varied and rich stories um, with elaborate background and strong themes and very compelling characters. One of my favorites is Retrospective, a story about a family who are memorializing a legendary mother who is a very famous art collector uh, who lives in Israel, in Jerusalem. And, well, let me see if I can find um, a good place to give you a view of how she writes. All over the world, obituaries puzzled over how Eva had managed to perform one of the largest and most dangerous art smuggling operations of the 20th century. The only person with a bigger collection was an American economist in Maryland, a friend of Eva's, whose quest to bring as many unofficial Russian works to the Western world had inspired her, she'd said in numerous interviews, to do the same for Soviet Jewish art. A curator in Stockholm, quoted in her Haaretz obituary, believed Eva may have surreptitiously rolled the thinnest sketches into rugs she'd purchased before going through airport inspection in Moscow, while the director of the National Gallery in London thought she may have hidden beneath the canvases of state-sanctioned art, those bridges, those workers, those cows, the unofficial works, but as Eva's will traveled across the Mediterranean and the Atlantic to her family in Boston, the biggest question for her daughter, Wendy, was what her mother had bequeathed to her. Wendy had spent the past two weeks in Israel, dealing with the funeral and the shiva and sitting through one too many luncheons honoring her mother at the Israel Museum, where Eva had been a board member for nearly 50 years. And while the trip had only confirmed for Wendy what she feared most of her life, that these art people knew her mother better than she did herself, Wendy's father had already been dead two years. She was the only family, family Eva had left, and she felt in her heart that the woman would have wanted to make her daughter's life as financially easy as possible. The paintings in Eva's house alone, Wendy told her own family as she tossed aside the rest of her mail and opened the executor's letter, had to be worth almost $20 million. But there, typed out clearly and succinctly, Eva's last wishes were stated. 
She was selling her private collection at discount to the Israel Museum and donating the proceeds every last shekel to charity. Wendy sank into a chair and put her face in her hands. And what could the Kaplans of Boston say? It's really amazing, Wendy's husband Larry said slowly, as though rummaging through his head for the appropriate word. And sort of tragic, their son-in-law Peter offered, that she'll never see any of this. But is it maybe, their daughter Hannah said, just a little bit tacky, putting her name on everything? What it is, Wendy said, finally looking up, is so unbelievably her. Well, in this story, against that setting, Eva's grand Well, in this story, against that background, Eva's granddaughter, Nira, and her young husband go to Israel to take care of all the final arrangements. In that process, they discover something about the grandmother, something shocking that has a parallel in their own story. I think that you can see what a challenge this story collection is and what a wonderful addition it is to American literature. I hope that you will indeed pick up a copy of Malianta Pohl's The Un-Americans and read it and let me know what you think. Thank you. I'm Glenda Bailey-Mershon for Women.